Hi guys, welcome back to part two of using this formula from HKDSE. And today I'm going to use this formula to solve two extra integrals for you guys. As you see on the board, question one is the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of one over one plus e to the power of sine x dx. Hmm. Now let's take a look at the formula over here. The requirement is that g of x plus g of negative x equals 1 and h of x equals h of negative x. Hmm, then we have to figure out what g of x and h of x will be. Well, I think that g of x will be the whole thing. Why don't we test that? So if g of x equals to the whole thing, which is 1 over 1 plus e to the power of sine x, then we need to prove that g of x plus g of negative x will equal to 1. So then we can just derive out g of negative x, which is 1 over 1 plus e to the power of sine of negative x. Okay, so since sine is an odd function, sine of negative x will equal to negative sine x. So this will equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the power of negative sine x, which is equal to, if we multiply e to the power of sine x on the top and bottom, then it will become e to the power of sine x plus 1 on the bottom and e to the power of sine x on the top. And let's take a look. g of negative x equals this, g of x equals this. If, they, if we add them up, they'll equal 1. So then our guess was correct. g of x does indeed equal that. And if g of x equals this, then that leaves h of x being just 1 because we let g of x be the whole thing. So then if we use the formula, then this integral will become the integral from... So this is from negative a to a. Then it becomes 0 to a. So it becomes 0 to pi over 2 of h of x, and h of x is 1, so it's 1 dx. And everybody knows the integral of 1 is x, going from 0 to pi over 2, and this is just pi over 2. So this is the answer to question number 1, and right now I'll explain to you guys question number 2. So now I'll start solving question number 2. So, if we recall from question number one, we let g of x equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the power of sine x. And if we look in question two, we also have 1 over 1 plus e to the power of sine x. So why don't we let g of x also equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the power of sine x? So then it becomes g of x being 1 over 1 plus e to the power of sine x. And we don't need to test this because in question one, we already did and proved that this was suitable for g of x. So that leaves h of x being x squared. So if we plug in negative x into here, the square of negative x is still x squared. So x squared is also is suitable for h of x. So we know that question two would just become the integral from zero to pi over two of h of x, which is just x squared. And everybody knows that this is 1 over 3 times x cubed, going from 0 to pi over 2. If we plug in pi over 2, then it's 1 third times the cube of pi over 2 is just pi cubed over 8. And the minus, if we plug in 0, is just 0. And we know that this will become pi cubed over 24. So this is the answer to the second integral that I have given you. But then let's think about it. What if we don't use the HKDSE formula? Well, I believe that you guys can solve number two by yourselves. So I will just do question number one as example without using the HKDSE formula. 
I'll just write the integral here one last time. We will do a simple trick that I've done with almost every single integral throughout my videos, which is to let u equal negative x. This substitution is very effective for definite integrals where the integrand consists of even or odd functions or the product of even and odd functions. So I'm just going to do the normal substitution. Just let u equal to negative x. So we know that du will equal to negative dx. And if we change the bounds, you see when x is pi over two, u is negative pi over two. And when x is negative pi over two, u is positive pi over two. So then the new bounds will be from pi over two to negative pi over two of one plus e to the power of sine of negative u on the bottom and one on the top times negative du. So if we use the negative to change the bounds of integration, then it'll become the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of, on the bottom is one plus e to the power of, we know that sine of negative u would just be negative sine u, and top will just be one du. Okay, so for this one, so I'm going to manipulate the right hand side integral a little bit, and I'm going to multiply e to the power of sine u on the top and bottom, so it becomes the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of, on the top will just be e to the power of sine u, and on the bottom will be e to the power of sine u plus e to the power of negative sine u times e to the power of sine u is just one du. Now, let's take a look. I'm going to change the u back into x because it's just a, a random variable. So, this will be 2, this will be negative pi over 2, to pi over 2, of e to the power sine x, over e to the power sine x, plus 1, dx. And, if we let i equal to the starting integral, and i also equal to this integral, then let's take a look. What if we add these two integrals together? Because the denominators are the same, and then the numerator will become the denominator. So then what does that mean? it means that it will become one. So then from that information, we know that two i will just equal to the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of one dx, right? And this equals to x going from negative pi over two to pi over two, which is pi over two minus negative pi over two, so it's plus pi over two, and this is just pi. But that's not it, because we know that two i equals pi. So then we know that i will just be pi over two. So this is how you solve the first integral without using the HKDSE formula. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed my videos, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.